Hello to all. Today we'll be doing an installation of an Autogen X smart controller on a Lonson 8000 watt generator for a customer. This will be a two part video. We'll be showing the standard Autogen X smart controller that is connected to Wi Fi for remote monitoring, starting, and uh, plus all the other extra features. And the second part of the video will be showing a different type of setup where we have a generator where there is no Wi Fi accessible and You'll see the little surprise there. So we'll start off with the installation and we'll take it from there. First we need to have access to the off on start toggle switch. It's a very easy setup. Uh, don't forget this generator also has a manual choke so we'll be showing the choke linear actuator as well for automation. So we'll start by removing the panel so we can have access to the rear. Here we can find the on off toggle switch we can see that the common is grounded the black and white wire is our starting signal so when this gets grounded it'll crank the engine and then to shut down the engine when this black wire gets grounded so we'll set up a start and a stop relay to control the on off circuit of the toggle switch. Okay here I've secured the stop and the start relay and I just wanted to show you a little trick. See these adapters? We can plug, this is our stop wire, plug it into there and this is the stop from the relay. So they're connected in parallel and we just connect that back to the toggle switch. This way the Autogen can automatically shut down the generator or you can use the toggle switch. Same goes for the start signal. Just plug that back in. Just need to keep in mind that when we want to use the automation, when we want to use Autogen, we need to put the toggle switch in the on position which is in the middle. Just routed the cables out to this side and into our wiring loom. So what we have done, on terminal 1 we have 12 volts power, terminal 2 is our ground so we can obviously get power from the battery, plus and minus, 3 is empty, 4 is empty, 5 is meant to be for the choke but what we have done in versions 1.53 and above we have swapped the choke signal with the start signal. So our start signal is on pin 5. Pin 6 and 7, we're going to be utilizing this to get the 220 volts from this generator as a running signal. Number 8 is our stop. Number 9 is going to be used for the choke linear actuator. Pin 10 is just connected here in, as a loop from pin 1. That way we can measure the battery voltage as well. And pin 11 is used as another running signal. So we can either use an AC voltage or we can use a DC voltage. I've connected it here anyway for demonstration purposes and this is a 12 volt signal that comes from the charging signal of the generator. As you may recall earlier we said that we will be also be using pin 11 to get a generator running signal from the 12 volt DC out. Now if we have a look at the back here is the rectifier block and we can see that the positive is coming out and going to the 12 volt post and the negative is this white wire here and it's going to the negative post. Now the negative post is not connected to the common ground of the generator so what we need to do is because pin 2 is the negative of the controller which we will be tapping off the generator negative post we need to connect these two lines together so we can have a common ground and I will do that shortly. To recap, we have taken pin 11 and it goes to the 12 volt DC out of the charging circuit. We have connected the negative side of the charging circuit that was not commonly connected to the ground of the generator. So we've added another wire and we've taken it to the common ground, which will also be connected to pin 2. Now we'll move on to the AC side. 
so we will connect pins 6 and 7 to L and M. Connected pin 6 to live, pin 7 to neutral and a recap. Let's go over everything. We have the stop and the start relay. So we've got the stop circuit going to the toggle switch. On the stop side, we have the start going to the start of the toggle switch. We can either use, as we said, pin six and seven so we can measure the 220 volts of the generator output, or we can use the charging circuit and measure from pin 11 the positive of the 12 volt DC out. And we've routed all our cabling to go through. Come to the 12P connector and we'll move over to the choke linear actuator. So I'm just gonna close everything up here. Okay, we've attached the choke actuator. We had to install a metal bracket just to lower it a little bit further down. It all depends on the, each generator's dimensions. So you'll need a little bit of retrofitting there. So let's just test that out. We have uh, the choke actuator has three wires, red, black, and green. Red and black obviously go to 12 volt DC. They're constant, and the green wire is the trigger wire. So whenever we ground the green trigger wire, it will activate. Let's just test that out. It's fully extended, and when we release the trigger, it self-closes. Try it again. And close. We'll take a few snapshots on different angles of the bracket and its installation so you can have an idea. Okay, we've come outside to test the generator for the first time. When we first put power to Autogen X, we'll see the magenta status light flashing. This means that it needs to connect to the Wi-Fi for the first time. So we need to open up ESP Touch. So I'm just gonna open up ESP Touch, the app. I'm not sure if it will be visible. So we need to connect to our Wi-Fi SSID, enter the password, and just wait a few seconds to get a confirmation. And that's done. Once that's done, Autogenex is gonna stop flashing magenta, it's gonna to go to blue, and we're gonna set up our Autogen app for the first time. So I'm gonna open up Autogen, I'm gonna create our new account. I'm just gonna enter a testing account at the moment. sign up and we need to add a new device it's going to ask us to scan the QR code the QR code is right here and it says it's ready and we press continue and we're ready Autogenex has gone to green because we're going to start the generator for the first time we need to set up our running signal we're going to test the 12 volt DC out running signal We'll enter a voltage of 9, so anything above 9 volts will trigger a running engine. We'll test this out first. So what we'll do is, at the moment we have here 0 volts, so let's add 12 and we'll see how it goes. Because what we actually want to do, we want to start the engine and we want to see what our app is reading. So at the moment it's not being, hasn't been calibrated. And you only want to calibrate this when there's a voltage applied. So we need to enter zero because there's zero volts at the moment. We're going to start the engine. Let's start it manually. Oh, no choke. Let's try from here. Very nice. Try to quickly come over here. Enter 11 volts or 12. We have a reading of 10.6. Go and adjust that. To 14. We can shut it down. With the engine running, we want to calibrate our 230 volts if we, if we are going to use AC voltage as a running signal. So I've selected 
AC voltage, anything above 200 volts is going to trigger an engine running. We've got the auxiliary settings, we run our calibration. I just checked it before, it was 231 volts. And if we come back here, we can see that it's reading 231. So we'll stop it. And let's start the engine again. And it's reading 231 volts. 